Welcome back, Physics 30. This is the Unit 4 uh, first booklet on electricity, uh, Part A, Electric Current and Potential Difference. And it pertains to pages 1 to 12 of the uh, duotang. And what we're looking at here is define and provide an example of elementary charge and electric current. State the main ideas in the fundamental law of electric charges. State the SI unit for electric charge. Apply the relationship between quantity of charge on an object and the number of elementary charge to solve problems. State the SI fundamental unit for current and explain electric current in terms of electron flow. Okay, so first of all, electrification is the production of an electric charge. And what you would have done back in grade 9 science is experiment a little bit with electrostatic charges. Um, meaning that those are charges that are stationary, they don't move continuously, they're simply transferred from one object to another, whereas electric current deals with moving charges, continuously moving. And of course, in order to uh, look at this, we have to remember what an atom is made up of, where do the charges come from, etc. So protons and neutrons are in the nucleus, they are not movable, so the protons give the atom its positive charge, neutrons have no charge. The electrons are negatively charged, they're outside and they are the parts of the atom that are movable. We can either add electrons or remove them from atoms and since they make up objects, remove electrons or add electrons to the objects themselves. The three laws that you would have taken back in grade 9 science, like charges repel, opposite charges attract, so that's where the opposite attract opposites attract uh, statement comes from and charged objects will attract neutral objects because they'll rearrange uh, where the electrons are in those neutral objects causing attraction. How's the amount of charge on a proton compared to that of an electron? We say that they are equal but they are opposite charges so one electron one proton um, they're equal in terms of how much charge but opposite in terms of the charge value themselves. Um, since a proton or electron is a really small unit of charge, we look at bundles of charges to make them measurable. So we need a lot of charges in order to actually detect a charge, so we use the, the um, word Coulomb to describe that. And we can define that in a couple of different ways. Uh, for part C here, you can see how many elementary charges, whether it's protons or electrons, how many of them make up one coulomb. So this little E here it can be mean, it can mean electron or, pr or proton, or we just say elementary charges, uh, speaking generically, it's either electron or proton. If I divide each of these sides by 6.24 times 10 of the times 10 to the 18, sorry, I get well one elementary charge is 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So you can define, you relate elementary charges and coulombs in that way depending upon which side you want to be equal to one. And quite often in terms of when you're looking at one elementary charge, in terms of coulombs, you may see plus or minus signs in front to distinguish between is our elementary charge a uh, pr proton or is it an electron? So you may see that. To determine what would the total charge of an object be, if there's an equation that the duotank suggests Q equals N times E, where Q is the total charge. Uh, little e is this elementary charge. Uh, it's equivalent to uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, as you can see here. And N just represents, well, how many of these do we in fact have? So if one elementary charge has a charge of this amount, then 10 would be, well, 10 times this number. So you don't really need an equation, but it will help you out uh, to assign those values in terms of variables. Okay, so just the charge of one elementary charge multiplied by the total number of those charges gives you the total charge. And again, we can use that equation to figure that out. So if we take a look at a couple of examples. In a lightning bolt, it is estimated that a charge of 20 coulombs is transferred from cloud to earth. How many electrons make up the lightning bolt? 
So that tells you that these charges um, are electrons. So you can see here I put a little negative here, meaning that, well, my total charge here is actually a negative 20 coulombs. And since I'm talking about electrons, I will refer to each elementary charge being negative 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Then of course to figure out how many of these I have, I'm looking for big N. So if I'm dealing with electrons, Q and E are both negative. If I'm dealing with protons, Q and E are both positive, such that N will always be a positive number. So looking for N here, divide by little e, divide by little e, negative 20 over negative 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, coulombs cancel and I'm left with simply a number which represents the number of elementary charges. And of course I was talking about electrons in the original question, so electrons is what I will use for the unit. B, a metal leaf electroscope is given a negative charge of 1.2 uh, sorry, 1.2 microcoulombs and you can see here one coulomb is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus, or sorry, times 10 to the 6 microcoulombs. How many electrons is this? So, of course, we're dealing with very small charges, so sometimes we'll see microcoulombs, millicoulombs, etc. So, you may want to just circle this so you have access to it, and you know relation, the relationship between coulombs and microcoulombs. So, uh, how many electrons? Again, we're looking for big N. One elementary charge is negative 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 because we're told it's electrons. And to convert microcoulombs into coulombs, one coulomb is 1, point, or 1 times 10 to the 6 microcoulombs, so that is negative 1.2 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. So again, we're looking for big N. Uh, rearranging the equation there, I get 7.5 times 10 to the 12 electrons. Next question, an ebonite rod with an excess of this many electrons shares its charge equally with the pith ball when they touch. So back in grade 9 science you would have done an experiment similar to that. What is the charge on the pith ball in coulombs? So here we're told how many electrons we have. We know what the charge of a single electron is. So to figure out the total charge Q equals the number times its value. There we have it. So Q, the total charge that we're dealing with here is one point, or sorry, negative 1.0 times 10 to the minus 10 coulombs. But we're told here it's sharing its charge equally with a pith ball. So I just simply divide that by two there. And of course, one divided by two is a half. But to make that proper scientific notation, move the decimal one place to the right which means this exponent will be negative 11. Because if I had to move it 10 places to the left in this number, moving this decimal one more place to the right, it means we have to move it one more place to the left. So negative 5, technically negative 5.0 times 10 to the minus 11. Okay, uh, let's see, how are we doing here in terms of material. Okay, we should be able to get through this whole video. Describe how the flow of water is similar to electric current. So we can think of water flowing from a high level to a low level. Water always flows downhill, of course. So if we're talking about electric current, there's a difference in potential energy, or stored energy, going from a high potential to a low potential. Similar to water going from a high region to a low region. And of course, what is needed to cause a flow of electric current you have to have this difference in potential energy. So very similar to gravity, high to low, and we'll look at in the next booklet, I believe, what do we mean by that potential. So electric current is the flow of charges, and to figure that out, we're looking at how fast they flow. It's almost like the speed of these electrons moving, so the amount of charge flowing in a certain amount of time. So as you can see here, it's like measuring the speed of the charges. So many coulombs per second, charges moving in a unit of time. So, and so the units here would be charges as in coulombs, time is in seconds, coulombs per second. So you can see it's very similar to meters per second like we looked at with speed. 
Um, but it, we're also told, and you'll, you're familiar with this too likely, that current can also be, be measured in amperes. Amps, amperes, etc. Which is the same thing as coulombs per second. So just another unit to measure current. Coulombs per second or amperes. So a few questions here. How much electric current is there in when 12 coulombs of charge passes a point in a conductor in four seconds? So how much current is I? Uh, the charge is 12 coulombs and it's four seconds. So I equals Q over T. So we get 12 coulombs divided by four seconds. So that's 3.0 coulombs per second or 3.0 amps. Okay, I think what I'll do is I'll stop the video there. You try the next few questions and in part two, we'll see how you made out. Okay, we'll see you soon.